Welcome to Wildlife Quest, where we discover some of the world's most exciting animals. This season, we are in Kenya at and Beyond's Kichwa Tembo Reserve in the Western Mara. Dedicated to ethnically managed and sustainable environments for African wildlife, Kichwa Tembo lies directly in the path of Africa's great migration. Join Ranger Bruce Hedges and me, Brittany Bristow, as we go on safari in search of some of the world's most endangered animals and their babies. So it's 6.35 at the moment. The sun has just started to peek into the sky and a black rhino is right by our car. It's incredible. He's been walking straight towards us this entire time, but we're having to stay really quiet because he's a little skittish. What's incredible is how skittish rhinos are. I mean, we were here very, very quiet, but he could tell that there was somebody around that he wasn't used to and just kind of turned away from us, walked away, turned around a couple times, wasn't really sure where, where to go, what to do. And then as soon as he got close enough to the road and he knew he was safe, he just ran right in front of us and straight into this field. It's very common during sunrise to see hot air balloons drifting over the savanna here in the Masai Mara. Now, it's, it's quite dark, so he probably didn't see us, but rhino have got excellent sense of smell and hearing, so he would have heard us and smelt us, and he's heading for the bush. Rhino's eyes are small and located on the sides of their heads, which makes it very difficult for them to see. Black rhinos are a critically endangered species. We're so lucky to have spotted one. We decided to head along this road here to see if we could catch up with the rhino as he comes through these trees. Here he is. There he is. Black rhinos are fairly solitary creatures, so it's not uncommon to see them alone. Black rhino are quite skittish animals and can be quite unpredictable. So we're just going to keep our voices down and sit quietly so we don't scare them away. This is a very large black rhino bull. And at the moment, he's patrolling his territory. So there's a good chance we will see him scent marking and spraying as he walks. He seems very intent on finding something. He's heading straight in every direction that he goes. He's not stopping, he's not feeding. He seems very focused. Now, what we think has happened, we spotted another rhino from a very far distance. We wouldn't be surprised if he's tracking a female. The rhino's sense of smell is their strongest sense, and they rely on it to find other rhino and also to detect danger. The way that he's walking and dropping his head and smelling tells us that he's after a female. There's a hyena. As we well know, black rhinos can sometimes mock charge if they feel that something's in their path that they're not pleased with. And because of their poor eyesight, they sometimes will mock charge things that aren't even providing danger or any kind of path resistance to them. There's another hyena. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. The hyena and rhino are approaching each other, so we're gonna hang around and see what happens here. Mm. 
One thing that's really cool to see is how the other animals that this rhino is approaching are interacting with him. They all seem to know that this is a big animal that could cause a lot of damage if he decides that he wants to charge at them, and they're all moving out of his path. The, the warthogs over here quickly scampered away. There he is, there he is. Yeah. Heading straight towards those trees. It's amazing how much distance they can cover in such little time, too. <laughs> He's come a long way. The rhino is just behind these trees here, but we're hoping what will happen since he was on such a mission coming this way is that he'll come out from the trees and cross right in front of us here, which would be really, really wonderful to see. He is really determined to find a female and to keep other males out of his territory. Oh, here he comes. Rapidly approaching extinction, the black rhino used to be the most widespread and successful of all of the rhinoceros subspecies. Black rhinos need protection in order to survive. And in some Zululand reserves where the white rhinos also live, their population is starting to grow. We tried to locate the rhino, but he disappeared into the bush. We're visiting a Maasai village in the morning, but we'll come back out to this area after to see if we can find him again. Morning, we're heading to visit a Maasai village close to our camp to learn more about the traditional life of the Maasai people. I'm so excited that we've arrived early enough to see the cows leaving to graze for the day. Look at these cows! Oh my god, that baby is so cute! Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Jumbo. 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 Good morning. We're so excited to be here at a traditional Maasai village today. We thought we would take a break from going out on safari to see what and beyond's mission for community care is all about. It's so beautiful here. Welcome. Thank you so much. Come to Ngeri village. Thank you. Yeah, that is the name of our village. It's wonderful. It's so beautiful here. Maasai people live in kraals, arranged in a circle. The fences surrounding their homes are designed to keep lions from attacking the cattle. While the women are responsible for building the homes, men are responsible for building the fences that surround the kraals. Everyone within the Maasai community holds incredible responsibility. Young men become warriors caring for the cattle, later becoming elders, while the women take care of their families and make all of the traditional Maasai beadwork. So right now, I am attempting to help with some of the beadwork. Um, so I'm working on a talking stick. So, and he agrees that I'm bad at what I'm doing. So this is a stick that essentially, if you're having a meeting, you would hold on to it if you're speaking. And then if someone else is going to talk, you pass the stick to them and then they are allowed to speak. So it's, it's a very wonderful way of keeping things calm and controlling conversation. And the beadwork is something that's very traditional to the Maasai people and the women make all of these beautiful pieces. And I would not survive more than five minutes because I can't even get a bead 
on this piece of string. I got one. <laughs> 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 Maasai women begin learning how to work with beads at a very early age and will, as they get older, develop a pattern that is unique to them with their designs. I'm getting better. I'm getting better, kind of. Ashe. <laughs> Each color represents something important to the Maasai people. For example, blue represents water, white represents milk from the cattle that they raise. Where I am right now is a dam project that was created and is supported by Africa Foundation in association with and beyond. Here with me today from Africa Foundation is Simon. Thank you so much for bringing me here, Simon. You're welcome. Would you be able to tell me a little bit about this project? Yeah, good. Uh, this is a uh, Murutoto water project. Uh, this is a Murutoto community where we are right now. The priority for this community was water and it's because we have a school nearby of a population of around 800 people wow. and they didn't have water and four of, uh, 400 of those people are staying in school mm -hmm. so they really needed water and we did this, uh, this dam and we pumped water to that particular school and not only to the school we also pumped this water to four other different villages mm -hmm. uh, because the ladies used to walk up to five to ten kilometers to get water wow. and now they're getting water right at their doorstep so that's wow. why we have this dam here. That's so wonderful. Water is one of the most necessary things for exactly. survival. So yeah. it's beautiful that you're working with the community to create something that will exactly. help them. Exactly. Yeah, and the, the really now we have reduced the distance that the ladies walk mm -hmm. uh, from going to get water. Some of them walk up to five to six kilometers, and now we have taken water closer to their doorsteps. They That's just wonderful. get out of their houses and they get water clean and safe for drinking. That's so wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for bringing me here and for Great teaching pleasure. me about Thank this. You. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much, Simon. You're welcome. We've had the most amazing day and are heading back to camp for a little while before we head back out to search for more black rhinos. with these campgrounds. I've been woken up by hyraxes, bush babies, and I even saw a genet the other night. There's so many monkeys, too. Oh, look! Right oh, there yes, in the tree. I see it. They're so cute. We were just talking about them, too. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to quietly walk this way because there are monkeys in the trees and we want to go see if we can hang out with them for a bit. That one's a blue monkey. Oh, there's some on the ground over there. There's one up here. Another blue monkey. such long tails. Now what's really interesting is the copper tail monkey and the blue monkey previously did not get along here. So anytime you would wander around in this area, you would see the blue monkeys in one spot and then the red copper tail monkeys in another. And they really didn't interact. Now they're at a point where they're hanging out in the same areas. So much so that this is the only place in the entire world that you find a hybrid between the two. They've actually started mating. So now they have one that is a mix between a copper tail monkey and a blue monkey, and they call it the Kichwa Special <laughs> because they don't know what else to name it. And it only exists here on the grounds of Kichwa Tembo. There's so many of them. You'll sometimes hear a little bit of rustling in the trees. 
and then you realize that they're like running all over the ground or pulling trees like that. Whoa. <laughs> Blue monkeys are also referred to as Sykes monkeys, and they spend about a third of their day eating. While some people consider these monkeys pests, I could spend hours watching them. They are absolutely adorable, and so funny too. Watching them groom, swing, and jump from tree to tree and protect their babies, which are so small and so cute. They are so incredibly expressive. It amazes me how human their expressions seem. I see blue monkeys around my tent every day. They hide in the trees outside and often jump on the canvas roof. When they see me, they even shake the tent. I don't know why, but they seem to want to talk to me. Maybe it's because I'm a bit of a monkey too. <laughs> There's been another sighting of the black rhino, so we're heading back out to find him. There he is. It's such a gift to be able to watch such an endangered animal living freely in their natural habitat. It looks like he found the female. This is an incredible sighting. There's a baby too. This is such a rare opportunity. One thing that's super cool about a rhino is that its horn is actually flexible. Yes, their horn is made out of keratin, the same stuff that our hair is made out of, unlike an elephant where it is ivory, like a tooth. So their horns actually free float so that they can bend and move. How cool is that? <laughs> the black rhino is right behind us. It's amazing to see them. Bruce and I are so excited. So just behind us are three black rhinos. There is a male, a female, and even a baby calf. Now what's incredible is in the first season, we were pretty sure we would see a white rhino. They're fairly popular in South Africa, but we thought seeing a black rhino was nearly impossible. And we were so lucky when we did, but this sighting trumps that. There are three black rhinos behind us. And in the Mara Triangle, there are no white rhinos and there are only 12 to 13 black rhinos. So seeing a rhino out here is so, so rare. Now, Bruce, I know that rhino conservation is something that's incredibly important to you, and it's been something you've worked very closely with as well. Yes, and Beyond is a major sponsor of Rhino Without Borders, which mm -hmm. is an effort to protect rhinos throughout the African continent. Wow. It's incredible. So they've been making their way through the grass here towards the trees. They're obviously getting a little bit warm. We've been following them for a while now, but I have a feeling they're gonna disappear out of sight sooner rather than later. I still find it so fascinating too that the black rhino, the baby will trail behind, whereas the white rhino, the baby goes in front. It's like a different pattern, even if they're running from danger. It's very interesting. Another major difference between black and white rhino is what they eat. The black rhino here, just like you can see, the male is feeding on leaves and twigs, whereas the white rhino feeds on grass. That is cool. I love the little baby horn on the rhino. It's just so small, but it continues to grow, just like an elephant's tusks. You can see the, the mother is the one in front, followed by the baby and the male following them. This is the most incredible thing to be seeing. I mean, three out of 12 or 13. We're seeing a quarter of the rhino population here. Oh, 
Not only is it special that we're seeing three here, but it's just special in general. Seeing three black rhinos at this state with their endangered status is, I mean, it's almost unheard of. So this is, this is really special. <laughs> It's so incredibly rare to be able to watch black rhinos. I was wondering if we'd have the chance to see any while we were here in the Mara, but we've been so lucky, especially to see them out in the open like this. The savanna is a wonderful place to be able to observe animals in their natural habitat because it's so expansive. It's so wonderful to see them all interacting with one another. so incredible that we've had an opportunity to see three black rhinos today. I can't believe it. <laughs> They're officially done for the day. They're hot. They want to go rest. So incredible to see them. So incredible. Today, sadly, very few rhinos survive outside of national parks and reserves due to persistent poaching. While initiatives through companies like and beyond are helping to keep the black rhinos alive, they are critically endangered. Currently, there are only about 5,000 left in the entire world. But there is still hope that through conservation and awareness, we can work to save these beautiful creatures. Thank you so much for joining us today on Wildlife Quest. I'm Brittany Bristow. And I'm Bruce Hedges. See, See you, you next time. time.